discuss lecture 5-3 on convolution examples, you should be reading chapter 5 of the course notes for more details on this content. The objective of today's lectures is to define the con convolution integral and to use it to find the output of a system and to solve the convolution to find the output of a system. The convolution integral is used to determine the output of a linear time invariant system given the impulse response. This is represented by y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t, h of t where the asterisk is the convolution operator. There are two methods for computing the convolution, analytical, which uses an integral, and graphical, and we will describe both of these in today's lecture. But first, let's derive the convolution integral. So here we have a figure, function, input, x of t, and then we have several blocks representing discrete portions of x of t, defined to be negative 0.5 delta of t to 0.5 delta of t. Then we have another block from 0.5 delta t to 1.5 delta t, and so on. So the first thing you should observe here is that the limit as delta t approaches zero will be x of t. So one way to represent x of t is that x of t is approximately, and it's going to be the sum of all of these blocks, but I'll just show a couple. The first one will be x of zero times u of t plus delta capital T over two minus u of t minus delta capital T over two. And that would be an example of the term with k equals zero. An example of the term for k equal one would be x of delta t times the quantity u of t minus delta capital T over two minus u of t minus three delta of capital T over two. And an example of the term for k equal two would be x of two delta t times the quantity u of t minus three delta of capital T over two minus u of t minus five delta of capital T over two. And then we put dot, dot, dot to show that this could go on either way forever. So recall that we can represent an impulse response, delta of t minus k delta t, as the difference between two step functions, u of t minus k minus one half delta capital T, minus u of t minus the quantity k plus one half times delta of capital T times one over delta capital T as delta T goes to zero. So each of these rectangular blocks would decrease in size to become like an impulse response. So another way to write this would be delta of T minus K delta capital T times delta of t is approximately equal to u of t minus k minus one half delta t minus u of t minus k plus one half delta t. So x of t would approximately be equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to positive infinity, x of k delta t times these impulse functions, delta of t minus k delta t, delta t. The way that we graphically show that these rectangular blocks become the impulse function is we draw one of the blocks with an amplitude of one over delta t. 
and show that on the left side I have k minus one half delta t and on the middle I have k delta t and on the right I have k plus one half delta t and then the width of the rectangle is delta t which means the area under it is a one just like we want our impulse response to be impulse function to be and as this gets smaller and smaller it becomes an impulse as shown here as we have shown before for any linear time invariant system delta of t minus k delta capital t as the input yields the impulse response h of t minus k delta of capital t so if we have x of k delta capital t times delta of t minus k delta capital t then the output is x of k delta capital t times h of t minus k capital delta t so what we can say here is that y of t is approximately equal to the summation from k equal negative infinity to positive infinity of x of k delta t h of t minus k delta t so it's the input times the impulse response times delta t so if we let lambda equal k delta t and delta t approach zero then we have as t goes to zero delta t becomes d lambda and as t goes to infinity k delta t becomes lambda and finally we can write the convolution integral y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity x of lambda h of t minus lambda d lambda the output response of a system can be found by using the convolution integral y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t which equals the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity x of lambda h of t minus lambda d lambda this can be represented by the system diagram as we've seen before where the system is represented as h of t and the input is x of t and the output is y of t now let's review some properties of the convolution that will be useful as we continue and they will be given in the following table the associate property states that if y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t and g of t where you convolve those two first that is equivalent to convolving x of t and h of t first and then convolving g of t the commutative property states that if y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t that is equivalent to convolving h of t with x of t the distributive property states that if y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t plus g of t that is equivalent to x of t convolved with h of t plus x of t convolved with g of t and convolution with an impulse response y of t equal to delta of t convolved with x of t is equal to x of t and the final property convolution with the shifted unit impulse is y of t is equal to delta of t minus c convolved with x of t which equals x of t minus c okay let's look at an example of using the analytical convolution integral in order to find y of t determine the output y of t of a system with h of t equal to e to the minus 2t u of t plus 1 and x of t equal e to the negative t u of t minus 2 recall that y of t 
is equal to x of t convolved with h of t, which equals to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, x of lambda, h of t minus lambda d lambda. So substituting in the values we have for x of t and h of t, we have the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, e to the negative lambda, u of lambda minus two, times e to the negative two times e to the negative two raised to the t minus lambda u of t minus lambda plus one d lambda. Let's make a sketch of what t minus u of t minus lambda plus one d lambda looks like. So recall that u of t minus lambda plus one will equal zero for t minus lambda plus one less than zero and one for t minus lambda plus one greater than or equal to zero. So if we solve that for lambda, we have zero for lambda greater than t plus one and one for lambda less than or equal to t plus one. So we can redefine the limits of integration to be equal to the integral from negative infinity to t plus one, e to the negative lambda, u of lambda minus two, e to the negative two, t minus lambda, d lambda. Recall we've now taken care of the period where u of t minus lambda plus one is a one. Now what about u of lambda minus two? u of lambda minus two is equal to zero for lambda minus two less than zero and one for lambda minus two greater than or equal to zero or zero when lambda is less than two and one for when lambda is greater than or equal to two. So this changes our other limit of integration to two. So we have the integral from two to t plus one e to the negative lambda, e to the negative two, t minus lambda, d lambda. We are now ready to simplify this integral and evaluate. So any term that does not depend on lambda, we can take it out. So we have e to the minus two t, the integral from two to t plus one. And in the integral, we have e to the lambda, d lambda. So the integral yields e to the minus two t times the quantity e to the t plus one minus e squared. And finally, we can write the final answer as e to the negative t plus one minus e to the two minus two t. And remember, this is only valid for t plus one greater than two, or another way to write that is for t greater than one. So you multiply this by u of t minus one. And here's an example of finding the output y of t using the convolution integral. Let's look at in-class activity two. Determine the output y of t of a system with h of t equal to e to the negative t u of t and x of t equal to u of t minus one. Recall that the convolution operator is commutative, so this time we're going to use y of t equals h of t convolved with x of t, which makes the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity h of lambda x of t minus lambda d lambda. So this is going to be the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. h of lambda is e to the negative lambda u of lambda. x of t minus lambda is u of t minus lambda minus one d lambda. 
So recall that u of lambda is equal to zero for lambda less than zero and one for lambda greater than or equal to zero. U of t minus lambda minus one is equal to zero for t minus lambda minus one less than zero and one for t minus lambda minus one greater than or equal to zero. That can be rewritten as zero when lambda is greater than t minus one and one when lambda is less than or equal to t minus one. So this makes my limits of integration from zero to t minus one e to the negative lambda d lambda. So this integral can be solved to be negative e to the negative lambda evaluated from zero to t minus one, which equals the quantity one minus e to the negative t minus one. Now remember this is only true for lambda between zero and t minus one, or when t is greater than one. So you would write the final answer as y of t equals the quantity one minus e to the negative t minus one times u of t minus one. Let's do one last example. Determine the output y of t of a system with h of, h of t equal delta of t minus one and x of t equal delta of t plus two. y of t is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, x of lambda, h of t minus lambda, d lambda. So y of t equals the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, delta of lambda plus two, delta of t minus lambda minus one d lambda. And according to my sifting property, we know that this will only be non-zero when lambda is equal to negative two. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity, delta of lambda plus two, delta of t plus one d lambda is going to equal y of t equals delta of t plus lambda. And this concludes today's lecture on convolution examples using the analytical expression.